Well, hello everybody. Uh, we are moving on to chapter five. We're looking at consolidated consolidated financial statements, intra-entity asset transactions. So our first asset that we'll be looking at is the sale of inventory. So we have intra-entity sales between parent and subsidiary companies. Uh, so how is this going to be handled when we have to prepare consolidated financial statements? We sort of looked at the intra-entity transactions when we were looking at the equity method in Chapter 1, uh, and we observed that we had to defer the gross profit from the inventory uh, because it's uh, taking place between companies where one exercises or has significant influence over the other company. Uh, in this regard, when we're doing consolidated financial statements, uh, it's kind of like we're selling inventory to ourselves because as we combine uh, the financial statements from the parent company and the subsidiary, then uh, it, it, it is, it's redundant, okay? It's a redundant transaction. So we cannot recognize this deferred, this uh, gross profit until we actually sell it to an outside company, a company that is no part of our consolidated entities. So we have an example here. We have Arlington Company uh, makes an $80,000 inventory sale to Zirkin, an affiliated party within a business combination. So Arlington is the parent company, Zirkin is the subsidiary. So in terms of the $80,000, which was the sales price, we're going to have to eliminate uh, or get rid of this sale that took place uh, because it's not really, like we said, a real sale as it takes place between uh, the same entity on a consolidated basis. And so we're going to have consolidation entry TI. Now, consolidation entry TI is only applicable in the year uh, of sale that takes place uh, in the year that we are preparing the financial statements. So this sales of 80,000, let's say if we're preparing financial statements for 2019, took place in 2019. So we're not doing this entry TI for sales that take place a year uh, prior, okay? So only the year that we're preparing the financial statements. And then we're crediting cost of goods sold. Now, uh, the, how exactly are we gonna defer uh, the profit when we are preparing consolidated financial statements? So we're still with the same, Arlington is the parent company, Zirkin is the subsidiary, uh, the cost of this merchandise is fifty thousand. The sales price is eighty thousand. And so we uh, demonstrated entry TI in the previous slide, which gets rid of the sales, uh, the eighty thousand, the sales price that was a debit uh, to sales and a credit to cost of goods sold for eighty thousand. And here. Uh, since we're deferring the gain, we're deferring this gross profit that relates to uh, the inventory until the uh, inventory is sold to an outside party. By increasing cost of goods sold, we are actually decreasing net income. Okay, so we're increasing cost of goods sold for the difference, the gross profit, the difference between the sales price and um, the cost, which is 30000 and then we uh, decrease inventory, which was recorded by the buyer uh, for $80,000. Uh, we have a credit of 30000 which reduces inventory to uh, the original cost of 50000 Um, in this example, we have that at the end of the year, uh, we actually have uh, a leftover inventory. So we're only deferring gross, uh, the gross profit um, for the inventory that remains unsold at the end of the year. And so we have that 20,000 remains unsold. We have already figured out the gross profit percentage. And then we multiply that year-end inventory by the gross profit percentage. 
to arrive at the amount of uh, deferred gross profit for uh, the current year sale. So again, we increase cost of goods sold. By increasing cost of goods sold, we decrease net income, and we're decreasing our inventory to um, um, report on a consolidated basis the inventory at the original cost. Uh, so what happens the following year? So in year two, we're still with the same assumption that we're going to defer it in year one and we're going to recognize it in year two. Assume that it was sold to an outside party in year two. So we have entry star G. And so we're going to, in this case, since we're recognizing this deferred gross profit in year two, we are decreasing our cost of goods sold. By decreasing cost of goods sold, we increase net income, and this uh, 7500 will be debited to uh, retained earnings. Now, if before when we were um, going through Chapter 1, we said we don't need to worry about if it's downstream or, da or upstream. So downstream is from parent to subsidiary. Upstream is from subsidiary to parent. Okay. So, but uh, for Chapter 5, as we're looking at consolidated financial statements, then if it's downstream, the parent is going to use this investment and subsidiary account instead of debiting retained earnings. So in this case, if it's downstream, we are using the investment and sub account instead of retained earnings. The amount doesn't change. And that's all for today.